Well, hey there, team, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to Crusader Kings 3. I'm very excited to cut my teeth on this. This is a Paradox Grand Strategy game. I'm fond of them. They are games that are time sinks that burn very slow. They're kind of very difficult to, uh, to showcase in YouTube, unless you're that guy and all you do on your channel is play that game, you know? So uh, we're going to see how we go. Um, this is, apparently this is a super big brain game about, you know, backstabbing and marriages and bloody incest and all the politics of a Game of Thrones sort of thing, uh, but set in, in more of a real world setting, basically. Um, I never played uh, Crusader Kings 2. One of the reasons I didn't is because this, this is like peak paradox. They release so much DLC for their games that it just transforms in such a way. So it was sort of like... If you want to get in on it, you have to buy 200 bits of DLC, and, and I, I just never really got around to it. Um, so we're going to give it a go and try it out. You can play it on Game Pass, especially if you're an Australian. You can play it for whatever reasons. You can't... It's region locked in Australia via Steam. Um, I don't think it's anything strictly censorship related. It sounds like there was just... Someone fucked up in the chain of getting certification and dropped the ball. And so, for whatever reason, they're not allowed to uh, publish it here in Australia through Steam. But I, I bet you that'll be rectified in days. But you can check it out on uh, Game Pass. That's what I'm doing it on at the moment. Um, according to all sources, it's going to be fantastic. So we'll bloody give it a go. Um, the 101 guide to being an absolute squarehead trying to run a, a kingdom. And uh, with no prior knowledge. And just, you know, generally being stupid. A tutorial seems very sensible, right? Crusaders King 3, cru oh, I can't even say it, that's how stupid I am, Ugh. is a deep strategy game of dynasties and intrigue. Ooh. If you are new to the world of Crusaders Kings, I am. We strongly recommend you play the tutorial. All right. In the tutorial, you'll play as Petty King Merchad. King Chad. Yes. A ruler in Ireland. Lead your family and dynasty to defeat your enemies and become King of Ireland. Yes. King Chad. Let's go. How beautiful is this, like, mural? So good. So let's see. So this is going to probably be, like, the most complicated game. We like complicated games on the channel. You know, like Station Ears and all that. But this is a little bit different. Um, so I will apply Squarehead to Problem, and we will see what shakes out, basically. Welcome to Crusader Kings 3. You are a medieval ruler. Land is yours for the taking through clever marriages and diplomacy, or by way of the sword. God, I hope my dude's not shooting blanks or anything. There is no one way to win in Crusader Kings, only ways to enjoy the story that unfolds. Okay, yes, it's a good pitch. I'm, I'm in. Camera, use Wazda. Pressing home takes you back to the realm. Let's do that. Okay, zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. Um, uh, different information on the different bloody maps. Uh... Oh, the different zoom levels. Okay, so we're in that one. We're in that one. We're in that one. Ooh. Oh, Iceland. The Yaldum of Iceland. What a fucking joke. Look at us down here. Oh, I own Munster. Da, 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 da. All right, let's go. Next. Crusader King spans over hundreds of years and many generations. Right now, time is standing still because the game's paused. Yes. This tutorial will keep the game paused while we walk you through some game concepts. Yes, yes. Uh, sometimes you will uh, see highlighted blue text like this. Oh, yeah. This means you can hover over it and see more more shit. Okay, cool. Um. Oh, okay. And then you can hover over this as well. Oh, that's cool. That's clever. Some of these words uh, can even show further information. Like, is it a dookie or a duchy? Dookie. Uh can lead to a country which can lead to a barony oh oh you can just keep going in all right i get it i understand that's actually really clever look at this ui he's such a chad he just stands like a chad okay rules of the land now let's talk about the game everything takes place on the map before you the world consists of large and small pieces of land each belonging to someone based on their titles okay your titles are represented by icons with elaborate coats of arms. Where are my titles? Are these my titles? Petty King... Uh, um, hang on. The icon representing your realm is set by your primary title, which is the most important and prestigious title that you hold. Oh, here we go. 
Your primary title. Petty Kingdom of Munster. Earldom of Thomon. Oh, this is this is sick. Kingdom of Ireland. I have a claim. Right, so because that's my better title. A holder. Petty Kingdom. Petty King Merchad McDon McDonchad. Merchad McDonchad? Oh my god, I'm gonna lift this naming convention. Does that does McDonchad mean son of Don Chad or of of the Don Chad McDonchad? Yeah, I, oh my god, this is fucking rad. I bet I'm saying it wrong as well, but I, no, I'm actually saying it right. The Irish are wrong in that case. You got to say Chad. Um, succession law, male preference, good. All right, yes. All right, I'm on board. Let's go. If you click the character portrait highlighted in the character view. Uh, the borders of your realm capital, Lumen, Lumen, Lumni, Lumnich. Like, I'm fucking Irish, I can't say any of this stuff. Like, I've got Irish blood, doesn't mean I'm, it's not like I've been there before or anything. Uh, we'll light up. Outside of that will be the borders of your entire realm. Luminic. Yeah, Luminic. Okay. Munster is your primarily, is your primary title. Which is why your realm is named after it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You also hold the Earldom of Thamond as a separate title. Okay. If you zoom out, it will read Munster on this part of the map because you're the top ruler. Okay. That's, that is cool. I, this is a big blind spot in my history. I, I don't know shit about all these titles and stuff. So this is really cool that it's all like the gameplay mechanic. Um, uh, as a ruler, you can only hold so much land on your own. You will often have other rulers helping with their administration of the realm by holding land titles within your borders, making them your vassals. Right, so we have like lieutenants, basically. Define your own land, your domain, press the yeah, We did that, home key, and zoom in. Once, cl once closer up, you can see blue labels on the, the baronies that belong to you. In this case, it will only be Luminic. Yes. The Earldom of Ormond is held by your vassal. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. Characters. Characters. Okay. Um, it's a bit windy today. I hope the mic's not picking that up. Okay. Your character is the ruler of the realm. Okay. Character avatars. Yes. You'll need to make sure that your dynasty survives and thrives throughout the ages. Your titles give you power and control over territory and other characters who might hold okay cool click on your character Oots. there he is there's the big dog himself catholic irish all right characters have traits which can affect their skills oh uh which as well as how they react to things these are illustrated by icons in your character view some traits tell you about a character's personality like fickle calm or generous there you go you can mouse oh look at that and they actually yeah yeah okay Yep, yep. Other traits are specific to how a character has lived their life, such as your education trait or your commander traits. Ah, okay, so a bit of like nurture in a way. Um, you are temperate, wrathful, and impatient. Wonderful. That's, uh, that's a weird. Having temperate in there doesn't fit, <laughs> but that's okay. From this, you can see that your character typically lives a modest life, but expects others to do so also, and is quick to anger when they don't. Okay, yes. Yeah, you know, I've changed my mind. I like that. When a character chooses to behave against their personality traits, it can cause stress. Yeah, this is sick. Traits can also impact how other characters react to you. Some people are impressed by the brave trait, while a lustful character is more likely to fe feature in salacious gossip. <laughs> Traits influence other characters' morality and greed, which can affect both their friendly and hostile actions. Right. All characters, yes all, have an opinion of one another which drives their behavior. This is my heir. Is this my boy? Brian McMurchad. Uh, what is this? What's this on the end? Br Brian. Brian? Irrational lackey. Oh my god. Okay, I've got a square head for a son. Fuck yes. But he likes me quite a bit. Why does he like me? Because I'm his dad. Father plus 50. Okay, cool. Um, opinion can cause people to rise against you or be unwilling to help you. High opinion, on the other hand, can make characters more inclined to join you. M join your murder scheme? Or fall for your seduction. 
Murder schemes are hostile action aims to kill its target. It's a secret scheme. Fuck yeah, some little finger stuff. How you choose to interact with other characters often affects their opinion of you. Well, yes, I would think so. Man, can I like just bully one dude in my court and just, oh, just, oh, yes. Okay, hang on. To help your, to help you further your goals, you will need gold. Among other things, gold pays for buildings, armies, and bribes. Okay, so we level all our shit up as well, just like, uh, like a total war game, I guess. Um, gold is collected passively from both your holdings and your vassals as tax. So my holding is my, my central settlement. Okay, I see. Larger vassals and more important holdings tend to give more tax. Right. However, money is not all. Certain things can only be achieved by spending the right amount of prestige or for religious matters, uh, piety. Uh... Character's fame and social standing. Okay, so it's just another, it's another income. Another, yeah, here we go. We got them up here. There's our dollars. There's our prestige, our piety, and renown. Very cool. Your prestige tells you how respected you are. It can be earned over time by holding lots of titles, for example. Right, so yeah, I can hold all the titles, right? Even though I farm like Thomond Thom is being held by uh, one of my shit kickers. But it's still my title. I get it. Okay. Um, or actively, such as by marrying into prestigious dynasties or fighting... Oh, okay. Fighting as an ally in wars. I say, so just doing Chad things. Got it. Whenever you earn prestige, um, you build toward your next level of fame. Oh, high levels of fame make other characters think better of you and bring powerful ways to wage war. Okay, so prestige, level of fame established, and we're working towards distinguished. Oh, that's zero out of a thousand. I see, that's a bar underneath, it's just empty. Okay, some actions cost prestige, like declaring war. These allow you to leverage your celebrity for your own benefit, and characters won't think less of you for using them. Uh, can you drop a prestige level? I would say so, yes. Spending prestige does not affect your level of fame progress. Oh, just your current prestige. Well, there you go, answered my question. Um, with a lot of piety, you have an easier time interacting with your head of faith. As you are Catholic, this is the Pope. Right. Piety can be uh, gained passively from the learning skills and virtuous traits, or actively from choosing to do religious things, such as going on a pilgrimage. Okay. You also have a level of devotion, which builds over time whenever you gain piety and can have positive effects on your character. Okay, is this a level? There you go. So there's, it's a level as, I can't, why can't I? Okay, it doesn't matter. It's a level as well. Okay. Similar to prestige, some actions will cost you to spend piety, like declaring holy wars, if you, or if you want to create a new faith, create a new faith. Squareheadism, yes. Um, spend piety like this uh, is normal, and characters won't think worse of you for it. I understand, I do. So this is a lot of information, but I'm absorbing it like a big old fucking sponge. This is I, we're getting there. As well as traits, your character can also pick a lifestyle. There's five lifestyles. Lifestyles represent what you put the most effort into day to day. And each one has several focuses inside relating to it. Every focus gives you a unique bonus and makes events associated with that focus more likely to happen. Click on the lifestyle button. That's this here. This, this is the Sims on crack. Um, okay. Click on the lifestyle button and see focuses. We did that. As time goes by, your character will earn lifestyle experience for maintaining a particular lifestyle. When you acquire enough lifestyle experience, you can select one of the lifestyle perks from any of the trees. Yes. Perks represent you practicing and developing yourself over time and offer unique bonuses like special traits that unlocks uh, lifestyle specific mechanics and content, such as the ability to start abduction schemes. What's this? Is a hostile scheme that aims to imprison its target. Oh my god, we can lock people up just because I'm because I fucking want to. Yeah, it's my reasons my own. As an example, the strategy, authority, uh, as well as the chivalry focus all give martial experience, which can be used to buy any of the martial lifestyle perks. Right. So we've got to choose a focus. Because of your martial education, you gain 30% more experience in this lifestyle. Oh, well, let's just do that then. That makes sense. Holy dooly, what is going on here? Focus, oh, there's a sub-focus. This is insane. Um, chivalry, victory comes not through blood or gold, but honor. 
to authority to rulers to make all the aspects of a realm move in unison and work together. Mm-hmm. Strategy. Luck and win a duel, duel. No, no, no. Authority. Let's go. Big old. Let's do it. Choose a focus. I understand. Okay. Now what? Now, having selected a focus, you can move to... You can move on to other people. If you're new to this game, interacting with characters is key. Um, and you have many options how to do so. You can right-click on a character portrait, including your own, to get a list of interactions. Oh. This is where you can start wars or initiating a scheme. Okay, okay. Open your character view. Right-click on your heir's character portrait to see the interactions available. Oh. Let's start with the basics. Everybody likes gold. Try sending a bribe to your heir. Why not? Yeah. Bit of nepotism. Well, I mean, I guess we're just giving him money. That's not really. We'll give him an allowance. That's what it is. We'll give him money to spend down at the lolly shop. Um, most interactions bring up a second window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to confirm send gift. Send gift. Pays 50 bucks to Brian Brian and Brian Ain. Gains opinion of you. There you go. Thanks, Dad. Oops, he's disappeared. Well done. You've successfully increased somebody's opinion of you. Certain opinion modifiers last forever, like family bonds. Others will wane over time, like fading memory of receiving a monetary gift. Okay. Um, nice. Playing a family. Okay. Now let's talk about your dynasty. As time goes on, unless your character meets with an untimely accident or terrible disease, they will grow old and eventually die. The story doesn't end there. It's only game over if you do not have an heir of your own dynasty. Okay, cool. And I could probably just name any old bloke. Like, if I have an absolute dipshit of a son, I could name my next door neighbor as my heir, right? Um, as long as you have heirs of your dynasty, your legacy will live on. When your character dies, you simply start playing as the new one. Ah. So we might have to play as Brian Brian. Very great. Uh, depending on the type of succession of your realm, this is likely to be one of your children, perhaps one that you groomed into the role of a ruler. Right, so we start character generating our, our next person. Your dynasty has its own coat of arms, which is currently highlighted and can be clicked for more information. Uh, okay. House Bri Brian. Okay, cool. So that's our surname. I understand. Okay. Now what? Succession laws. Oh my god. So much. Succession laws determine how many, all how all titles and resources are divided between the heirs when a character dies. Ah, you currently only have one heir, but let's take a look anyway. Open the realm view on the right side of the screen. Highlighted. Highlighted. There it is there. Realm. This is this is how you do a tutorial by the way, team. Oh my god, this, we're getting so many good tutorials recently, it washes the taste of some of the terrible ones we had just previous. Alright, inspect the succession tab. Okay. As a member of a dynasty, you also have renown. Shared by everyone in your dynasty, renown goes up whenever anyone in your dynasty gets prestige and reflects how infamous your family is rather than just you. Okay, that makes sense. So beyond you, it's the family's reputation. Making significant strides in your renown will echo down the generations for your descendants, slowly increasing your level of splendor. As the dynasty head, the most powerful member of your dynasty, renown will always will, will allow you to unlock dynasty legacies that will benefit all. It's almost roguelike-y, right? Um, renown remains after a character's death. Okay, cool. 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 To ensure the future of your dynasty, you need family members. It helps if you are married. We cannot promise that you will marry for love. Oh, no, of course not. Not in this. There's too much at stake. The dumbest thing you could do is marry for love. Um, let's get married. Sounds good. For unmarried characters in your domain, you can set up marriages or betrothals. Right. Uh, Right-click on my character and go find spouse. Yeah, baby. Oh, Tinder. Here we go. Oh, there's some rude fucking lids on here. Oh, look, she's... Hers is getting held together with sticky tape. All right, um... Choose find spouse. Opens a list of potential spouses. They hail from courts all over the world. Eh! Hey, how exotic! Um, choosing arranged marriage also opens a list of potential spouses 
but only with people from the court of the character you clicked. Uh, okay. Your own character is visible on the left because this marriage needs your approval. Whoever is the liege of the other spouse will appear on the right side as the union will need their approval as well. Uh, okay. Arrange marriage can be useful for matchmaking between your courtiers, right? The courtier is an unlanded character who serves a ruler in their court. Yeah, so just a bloody hanger on. Or for setting up specific marriage alliance. For now, find spouse is more relevant for our purposes. Sure. Okay. There are many factors to considering when choosing a spouse. Exactly. Cup size, head square size, you know, these things. To help you out, there is a filter um, for available for sorting. Among these, what is in the filter? Let's have a fucking squeeze. Hang on. Age. Age difference. Wait, age difference? Oh, 15 years. It would be like a 100-year-old dude marrying a 21-year-old chick. Fertility. Oh, that seems pretty important. Okay. Okay. Nothing too spicy in there. Um, among these to consider are uh, alliances, skills, personality traits, expected fertility, and more. Some traits are uh, congenital, meaning they might be inherited by your children. Perhaps someone with a trait like that is a good place to start. Yeah. You can change your selection by... Okay. Uh, nothing will happen until you click Send Proposal. Next. When you have selected two people for your marriage, you are presented with the details of the union, along with additional options such as having the marriage be matri matrilineal. What is that? In a matrilineal marriage, children will be born into their mother's house and say, Get fucked. That's not happening. These are my children. I'm making kids for me. Um, I'm Chad. I'm King Chad. Come on. If you are ha uh, happy with the marriage, go ahead and send an offer. Um, uh, it might take a few days. Get married. All right. Can I uh, minimize this or something? Or can I bring this to the front? Whatever. I'm not that worried. Welsh? Oh, yuck. I don't know about Welsh women. Sort by relevance. Sort by opinion of you. Um, sum of all skills. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, relevance. Um, give me, give me the old fertile filter. Off. Oh, hang on, that's already part of the filter anyway. So we won't be marrying no infertile ladies. I bloody hope not. Fine. Health is fine. Where's the fertility part? I can't. I can't. I can't see it. Cynical, deceitful. Oh my god. It's like picking, picking my ex. Alright, hang on. Let's go, uh, uh... Diplomacy. What is all this shit? Stewardship, intrigue. What about sum of all skills, right? Lowborn. Oh, yuck. Sadistic. Stubborn. And patient. Agnes, and she fucking hates me. And she's lowborn. Oh my god. 17. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. No, let's marry this sadistic bitch. That <laughs> hates my guts. Petty King Murchad loses prestige. Why? Chance of children, medium. No inheritable traits. Uh, will accept. He will accept. Alright, give me your dodgy, sadistic, lowborn, shit kicker, angry daughter, please. Greetings, uh, just King. Don't worry about Petty King. King Chad of Munster. I expect I accept your marriage proposal. You will be joined with my acquaintance Agnes. God, she's a fucking ugly. In holy matrimony, may God grant you long life and many children. Yeah, well, fingers crossed. All right, let's go. I understand. Um, family is important. The player heir will always come from your dynasty, and uh, most often from your house. In the future, it won't hurt to keep an eye on your family and their line of succession. Depending on their succession laws, you might end up inheriting titles along with land and vassals from your relatives. Fuck yeah. We just should collect up everyone else's shit. That'd be so good. Not everyone in your dynasty will be landowners, but every plot of land on the map has an owner. Okay. 
sometimes that owner is you sometimes that owner is one of your vassals and sometimes it's another realm entirely many of whom also have or are vassals yes i understand this so far most titles are structured together in a pyramid like faction uh fashion sorry we've got a, a county making you a count oh or a countess a dukey making you a duke or duchess uh, a kingdom, making you a king or queen, and an empire. Okay, cool. Every tier belongs to a title one rank up the chain. Every county is technically part of a dukey, and each dukey, or duchy, or whatever, however the fuck you say it, is technically part of a kingdom. Yeah, yeah, I understand this. There are many dynamic names for these titles, as well as your current ruler is in charge of a petty kingdom, which corresponds to the duchy tier. Ah... Oh. So, I'm not really a king, I'm a duke, sort of. There are also barons, the minor rulers of single holdings beneath counts. Oh, these characters are generally quite minor and unplayable. You do have one, the Mayor of Innes. <laughs> what a nobody. We say technically because as Crusader Kings let you play with history, there's no way to guarantee that a king is actually in charge of all the titles that his kingdom is supposed to contain within his borders. We call this title hierarchy de jure, and if the structure has been broken, it is often possible to declare war over such territories. Yeah, right, okay, and that's where you get like a Cassus Belli sort of, you know, claims to shit that are flimsy. If you switch to the duchy titles map mode, you can see that as the ruler of the duchy of Munster, the county of Desmond should legally be part of your realm. The County of Desmond. How far out do I have to go? I don't understand. Oh. County Holder. Ah. Okay. Okay. The different map modes can help you give an overview. All right, we'll start figuring out. Hang on, change to the duchy type map mode. Return to the realms map mode. How do I, is that just from zooming out like this? Uh, oh no, here we go, here we go. Duchy. Yeah, that's better. And return to the normal map mode. Okay, cool. Oh my God, this game is intense. Um, the de jure title of Munster consists of three counties. Their names should be visible on the map. Thomond, held by you. Desmond, held by a neighbouring ruler. And Ormond, which is held by my um, my vassal. These counties are made up of, a sm of smaller pieces of land called baronies. It's on this level that we find your holdings. Okay, Jesus Christ. Um... Holdings provide different levels of taxes and levies, as well as buildings that you can construct and upgrade depending on the holding type. Right. It's not very important what you build right now, but we suggest start by upgrading the bastions and curtain walls. Oh, okay, we can do that. So we're going to click on Luminique. Uh, bastions and curtain walls. Upgrade. Three years. Let's go. Well done. It'll take some time for the building to be ready. Okay. Luminic wasn't built in a day. Once you construct and complete, you'll receive benefits of building you chose. Okay. Every holding provides taxes to their holder. Bloody, you better believe it. If that holder is a vassal, they will also pay taxes to their liege. Good. Taxes provide your main income of gold. Obligations can affect how high or low these taxes are. Times of war also affect the level of control uh, in a county, which in turn affects taxes uh, okay well there's the tax thing there as a ruler you are likely to be the liege of at least one vassal these are uh, rules rulers within your realm who have sworn fealty to you uh, vassals supply you with taxes and soldiers levies okay it is possible to both be a liege and a vassal at once that's what i was saying who's in charge of me so i'm guessing that there would be a claim 
for the next level up you know what i mean like the king of the king of fucking ireland has a claim to try and fold me in as his vassal doesn't seem like i am though right open the realm view on the right side of the screen highlighted uh, 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 uh. here is a list of your current vassals along with some additional information about them are you oh you're all my vassals but yeah realm size zero so i don't have so you have ormond okay cool and you have nothing oh you're the shit mayor you're the baron oh, okay cool um at the top of the list is the ruler of ormond whose land you can see on the map yeah yeah, yeah. we covered that it's over here on the east um go here for an overview of things such as your vassals current opinion of you whether they are considered a powerful vassal or not what's that uh, are the handful of vassals with the most soldiers and highest income you need to pay careful attention to them they expect to hold a seat in your council and will have significantly okay yeah 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 okay so what's your opinion of me plus 10 it doesn't seem like a lot plus 13 impatient calm versus wrathful short reign okay that's fine it's worthwhile keeping your vassals happy this keeps them out of schemes and factions against you yeah of course no matter how mighty a ruler your character is if your realm unites against you either to depose you through war or just murder you while you sleep your reign is bound to be cut short yeah that'd be bad that that wouldn't go well and then my stupid square head son would take over Ugh. Uh, some of your vassals might serve on your council making their opinion extra important as they will be trusted with councillor tasks okay there is a limit to how many vassals you can comfortably be in charge of before your realm becomes unwieldy vassal limit 20 it says i've only got one that must be because he has holdings huh. jesus this doesn't matter for the tutorial but when you start to build your own kingdom be mindful of growing too fast okay if you exceed your vassal limit you can grant lower t ranking titles away to your vassals sometimes you can even create new higher tier titles to consolidate the power in the area and oh my god okay yeah title management oh this is so good all right your realm is the complete body of land and titles that you own including the area held by your vassals you know we know this right now for you this means that the counties called earldoms due to your irish culture of thormund and ormond yeah yeah, yeah. okay yes when domain is used we are instead referring to the lands that you own personally without vassals which is thormund right okay some things w that will happen only affect your domain yeah, yeah yeah okay um next now that there is a limit to how much land you can hold personally before you start incurring penalties the domain limit or note sorry note that uh domain limit when you go above your domain limit it can be a good idea to use the grant title interaction on characters you are friendly with making them your vassals domain limit how many holdings you can legally have in your domain okay right oh it's affected by a lot of things like skills succession all right yeah as you have no spare titles to give away you cannot currently do this but you would otherwise find it in the character menu visible okay yep cool that's fine so essentially you can create a lot of stuff if you need to to you can you know massage it around managing a realm is a lot of work yeah no shit as a ruler you have the help of your council these can be either vassals or members of your court and they act as your trusted advisors there's one corresponding to each area of skill married rulers will also have their spouse assisting them oh really really yeah okay it's a bit unacceptable isn't it all right let's open the council view petty queen rough head agnes she even has a square head she's gonna fit right in with my family um we're gonna have some square headed kids it's gonna be great being a counselor is a prestigious uh wait counselors can be set to work and they all do different things you can change a counselor's task by clicking on the button near their portrait in the council view being a counselor is a prestigious position powerful vassals will expect to be chosen for it okay what's going on here oh okay here we go. fabricate a claim religious relate oh okay nice i like that you can see them all, all your dudes that's cool schemes are long-term goals aimed at another character 
They have a hostile goal, like murder or abduction or your, of your target. Or they can be wholesome, like as befriend. Oh, oh. Open the intrigue view. I'm going to have a little sippy sip. Ah. All right. Schemes. Inspect the schemes. Personal schemes. Underst okay, right. A good time to use a scheme might be when you find the line of succession not being as clear-cut as you'd like. One way to get ahead is simply remove the competition. Yes! Uh, murder schemes come with the risk of discovery. If your attempt goes awry, it will make your character unpopular, especially with your target. I would think so. Hey, uh, I saw you trying to stab me in the neck. I am not friendly to you anymore. Um, the sway scheme is made for increasing the opinion someone has of your character. Let's try it! Open the council view. Roger. Here, oh, this game is cool, man. Right click on your court chaplain. Is that you, is it? Right click. Um, imprison and murder. I don't think that's what they want me to do. Sway scheme. Here we go. If schemes are 64% based on my diplomacy and there's a minimum chance. Okay. Rickulf. That's his name. His opinion will increase. Um, expected time to scheme. Doesn't look like there's a downside. Doesn't... Oh, he doesn't like me at all. Negative 25. He fucking hates me. Foreign culture. Yeah, right, eh, mate? All right, well, let's go. Let's scheme, baby. Excellent. Once set in motion, your scheme will slowly progress over time. The time before a conclusion is reached will vary, depending on its success chance, which can be affected by relevant skills. In this case, diplomacy. Yeah. If you're unhappy with your scheme, you can always cancel it by clicking Abandon Scheme next to the scheme. Uh, open the Intrigue. And here's the scheme here. 16 months. Okay, we've got to cheer this. Turn that frown upside down, you know? Sometimes schemes can give rise to secrets. Ugh. If you catch someone trying to commit murder, it's probably in their best interest to make sure you keep it quiet. You can also blackmail them Ugh. to gain a hook. Hooks represent a favor you can call in with a particular character, encouraging or forcing them to do your bidding. Ugh. This is awesome. Um, as you play, you'll find many different ways to gain and use hooks. When you start playing, experiment with it. Now let's pretend you have managed to get a hook on one of your vassals. Inspect the hooks tabs. All right. Hooks you hold. What's my hook? What's going on here? Unmarried. That's not much of a hook. Uh, your spy master and vassal. Content planner. Oh, he's a YouTuber. Um, I don't see what the hook is. Hook. Number of weak hooks. Oh, okay. So it's, it's nondescript. It's just, hey, I've got shit on him. Yeah, okay, cool. He likes to kill kittens in an alley and that sort of stuff. But then you've got the serious hook, which is pretty bad. All right, this weak hook can be used for a number of things. One is to increase the obligations set by the feudal contract you have with a feudal vassal. Um, okay, to access the menu for changing your feudal contract, go to your vassal list in the realm view. Or right-click on his portrait to choose Modify Feudal Contract. You may notice that some interactions are not immediately visible. This is because you have many interactions available. But oh, go to more. All right, hang on. Modify Feudal Contract. Oh, it's got the little hook next to it. Do I go? I understand. Oh. oh, I didn't use my hook. Okay, that's fine. War is an essential part of... Oh, let's keep going. Fuck this. I'm, I'm into this, and this is intense. Uh, is a central part of Crusader Kings. There are a lot of concepts to cover, but for now, let's touch briefly on some of them. Uh, we'll let you discover when you start playing. Yeah, I get a feeling this might be the last lesson. War, right? Um, most important things in any war are the battles, which are fought by armies. Most of your soldiers will come from levies, but you can expand your army by employing men-at-arms. Oh, okay, so they're more mercenary. Well, yeah. Well, levies are raised from the people, right? Yeah, from a holding. If things get really tough, you can also hire mercenaries, provided you have the gold. Hang on, men-at-arms. A professional soldier is superior to levies. Okay. 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 
Open the military view tab. Let's go. All right, there's all the soldiers I've got. Oh, I've got knights as well. Sick. When a war starts, you'll be able to raise your armies from this screen via the raise uh, all armies button. Where is that? Oh, I see it. Yep. When the war is over, you will have to disband your soldiers before starting another war. Rally points are mustering grounds for the levies and men at arms under your command. Okay. Rally points. So I would add a rally point somewhere. Okay, I get it. To start a war, you'll need a legitimate reason, a Cassus Belli against another ruler. There you go. I'm already ahead, ahead of the curve. You have, uh, there are various ways to obtain Cassus Belli. Uh, you might have du jour titles that make you the rightful liege of your target. Yeah, we understand that. I actually understand that, right? Um, which we probably do, actually, with, like, uh, Desmond. Um, you might, you might inherit claims, or you could pursue holy wars against nearby infidels. Oh, that sounds pretty delicious, too. Although these are the most common, there are dozens of different types of Cassius Bellies for you to discover in, as you play. The easiest, most straightforward way to acquire claims is to use Fabricate Claim on County. This is something your court chaplain sees to, uh, through one of his counselor tasks. Right, so he just makes up a bullshit claim. Oh, somewhere in the in the lineage, 23,000 years ago, well, you should have gotten this title, so now we can kill him. I like it. Soon we'll let you unpause the game. <laughs> okay. Uh, there are just a few things to go over first. Firstly, it's important to know that there are five different speeds available. And you can just press numbers. Thank God. Why do games not do that? And be able to pause. Secondly, for certain important events, the game will auto-pause. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with playing at lower speeds, increasing the speed when things are quiet, or slowing it down when you go to war. Uh, generally, we recommend you pause the game when inspecting menus, or when you are faced with tough decisions. Yes! To start ticking time, spacebar for pause. This will let days, months, and years go by. Armies told to do so will move. Events will occur on the screen. Letters will be sent and characters will age. Find a speed you're comfortable with. You can always change it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What now? Now is the first task. Let's remind your neighbor, the Earl of Desmond, who his rightful liege truly is. Oh, I was just thinking that. I was just thinking that. Yes. If it happens to expand your realm, so be it. Right, so we're going to jab him and see if he'll bend the knee without any drama. Right? Uh, using the character interaction system that we went over earlier and selecting him via the map declare war on the ruler of Desmond that's extreme you should already have a valid Cassus Belli as his title is de jour uh, a part of your realm yeah yeah okay for more hands on experience we'll walk you through what happens in the flow of war well you know what we're already this far into it let's just keep bloody going shall we um declare war on Earl Murak of Desmond. All right, well, let's click Desmond for starters. There he is there. Hey, big dog. Wartime. Choose a Cassus Belly against him. Du jour. There it is. Chosen. If you enforce your demands, you gain the contested county. What is this? White peace, enforce demands, surrender. Change objective. I can't, I can't see it because it's underneath the screen there. But uh, let's just go with the give me your give me your entire county, and he has a similarly sized army. All right, let's go declare war. Boots. Now as a first task, let's remind your neighbour, the Earl of Desmond, whose rightful liege truly is. If it happens, to... wait, no, we did we did exactly that. I've read that already. Okay, cool. Jeez, we're getting the music. You've successfully declared a war. Next, you should rally your armies. A button has appeared at the bottom of the screen to help you. Yeah, good. What a bloodthirsty game. So here, here's the go button. Um, whenever you, uh, but you can also do this from your military view. Wherever your rally point is, in this case, Thorman. Oh, there it is. You can see it on the screen. Uh, that is where your army will gather and await your instruction. No, you will have to unpause the game for your army to gather more than a handful of men. Leave it a few days and the army will form. All right, raise armies, unpause. To move your army, left click uh, on the army on the map and right click where you want them to go. Perhaps the enemy capital, Barony. Yes! 
In order for your army to walk across waters, it will embark and turn into a fleet. For now, let's just stay on land. How big's my army? I can't tell. First army. Six soldiers. Oh, that's not many. Let's go. Let's speed it up. Pause. Jeez, where are they going? Wedding celebration. Oh. God, my wife is so ugly. Um, of course, uh, what, what's this? My marriage to Petty Queen Agnes. The realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding. Well, I don't want the people to seem ugly. Why? Is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during time of jubilation. Of course I will collect it. Who pays for their own wedding? Yes. Oh my god. Oh, well, here we go. Look, look. Let's go smash this other army. Hang on, what's going on here? Now that your army is moving, it's probably heading into battle with enemy forces. This can be a head-on encounter with other armies or sea. Battles will happen automatically. Yep, similarly, sieges will... Uh, when you place an enemy on a holding. It's a good time to unpause the game if you haven't done so yet. Otherwise... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Oh, jeez. you got to be careful pressing. Don't press five. Five jumps forward so far. All right. Outcome of a battle. Hang on. Am I losing? What's this bullshit? Both side of any men at arms. Okay. Come, boys. Fight the good fight. Win win for dad. Oh, it's, it's paused. My bad. Here we go. Uh-oh. 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 What are you doing, game? I'm, sp I'm in the tutorial. I'm supposed to win. To get an idea of who's winning the war, you can always look at the war score. I get an idea. It's not me. My nephew got taken prisoner. Oh, shit. In the lower right corner. It goes from negative 100 to 100. Negative 19. That's not good. And changes based on battles and sieges won. At war score 100, you can force the other side to accept your peace offer. Conversely, at war score negative 100, they can force you. Ah. All wars end uh, in victory, white peace, or defeat. The exact consequences of any of these change depending on the Cassus Bellow. Yep, that's fine. Alright, so we got absolutely fisted, is what happened. Oh no, they're chasing me. What is this? Hang on, we need more troops or something. Hang on. Crap men at arms regiment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what are these? Armored footmen? Yeah, create. Let's go. Um, uh, we get some light footmen. Where, where's my money? It's up there. Yeah, we're fucked. We, we need all these dudes. We need them. We'll get some horsemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll get some pikemen as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably don't need onagers or mangonels just yet. Alright, and they'll rally at that point. Okay. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get back in the fight. Wait, hang on. What's going on here? Your army is attacking an enemy holding? I don't think it is, to be perfectly honest. I think they're attacking my holding. I think the tutorial expected me to not suck. Where are my men at arms? I need them. I think it's it's okay. Hang on. Oh no! I'm getting smashed. Wounded. My injured knight. My knight Tadger has been wounded and his flesh has contracted foulness. If the right kind of treatment is administered, Jesus is merciful, he should make it. Well, there's nothing that can be done, mate. Alright. We get the gist of it. What a long episode, but I think that, um... I think that's taught us everything we need to know, pretty much. I think. Oh, shit. Pause. Stop chasing me, you bastards. Alright. A bit of a rough start. 
Um, I'm still not really sure what's going on with the man at arms scenario. We've got mercenaries over here. We could probably buddy hire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Band of the Horn. Cumbrian Band of Cumberland. Nice. Some of these... This game is so cool. All right, well, we'll put this up. This will serve as a bit of an introduction for stupid people. Uh, Self-included. Defeat, defeat. Yeah, yeah. Rub it in game, you bugger. Um, man, I'm enjoying this. I want to keep playing it. Uh, I've told you how to get it. Uh, like I said, you can get it on Steam if you're not Australian. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, let me know if you want to see more uh, of me fumbling my way through. We'll probably start a totally new realm. I'll marry a totally new, different, ugly wife. And, um, and we'll, we probably won't start wars immediately. But, uh, yeah, I look forward to playing more of this. All right. Team, thanks again for joining me. We might just leave it there for the time being. And I will catch you guys on the next one.